Hey guys, Campi Fligre in Italy, a super volcano in the direct proximity of more than 3 million people in the city of Naples is making headlines again. But let's say it is continuously in the headlines because it just doesn't stop rumbling. And it has been rumbling now for over three days again. I'll show you the list of the earthquakes shortly. This is a caldera in southern Italy that has the potential to be devastating, not only for Italy, but also for the world, because it could produce a super volcanic eruption that would have absolutely fatal, fatal effects. And that's why the authorities are taking it more and more serious. They just finished another evacuation rehearsal, this time not for earthquakes, this time for a volcanic eruption. So they're trying to prepare the population for a potential imminent eruption. So the current earthquakes, they are related to something that is called a Brady seism. And we have this Brady seism phase that has been going on basically since 2005. What does that mean? The land is rising, for example. Like the port of Pozzuoli has risen that much that the water levels in the ports were of course getting lower. And now there's dry spots and dry areas around the piers and around the seawall of the port, you can now see grass growing there because there is no water anymore. So this Brady seismic phase is also accompanied by earthquakes, of course, that come with the ground uplift. And this year alone, in 2024, the ground has already lifted up 160 millimeters. So the current monthly rate with which this Brady seism is happening or with which the land is rising is one centimeter per month. In April, it was two centimeters per month. It switched from one to two and just a month ago or so it switched back to one, but that doesn't mean that is over. It's not over at all. And to give you a better impression of what is happening underground, what is happening underneath the Solfatara, the Solfatara again is basically the epicenter of this current earthquake swarm that Campi Fligre is dealing with at the moment for the last three days. It keeps coming. So scientists have managed to basically map the movement of magma that is deep within or underneath the caldera and they have measured this within a 16 year period so basically on this map here you can see what happened from 2007 to 2023 and now we're in 24 so you have to even add up more to this they have confirmed the magma now as shallow as only 3.9 kilometers so that means the magma doesn't need to go far to erupt plus the caprock layer that keeps the lid on only has a third of its strength that it had in the 1980s when there was another really heavily Brady seismic event where magma was trying to get to the surface and ended in an intrusion. That means magma was moving, getting out of the magma chamber, but didn't make it through to the surface. That's called an intrusion. If it breaks the surface, it's an eruption. So this is something that is concerning. What is the driver of this ongoing activity that we're seeing here? That is the ascent of magma from a deeper magma reservoir to these shallow depths. And year by year, it has risen more and formed another smaller magma chamber there. So this magma is causing the slow and constant uplift of the ground. And that uplift in total is about one and a half meters from 2006 till today. So that's when I said the port of Pozzuoli, one and a half meters, that is like four feet, something like this. If you lose that much water in your port, that is a lot. So the danger is increasing because the source of this deformation, the magma has become and is becoming progressively 
more superficial. So originally they thought that magma reservoirs at a depth of eight kilometers, but now magmatic gases and magma have reached these shallow depths. The magma is at a depth of 3.9 kilometers. And of course, what we're seeing now in this earthquake swarm, and check it out, it's been October 26th, October 27th, and October 28th. This rise of the magma and the magmatic gases has contributed to this intensification of the seismic activity and to the increase in these phenomena that they call the gas emission phenomena. You see this in the Solfatara, these hot steam fumaroles. So these fumaroles definitely represent one of the main volcanic manifestations of this caldera. So let's have a look at the current earthquake swarm. And uh, I'll show you the earthquakes of the last few weeks as well. And I always said Vesuvius and Campi Flegre are playing tennis because it's like two at Campi Flegre, oops, throw the ball at Vesuvius, Vesuvius to earthquakes, then Campi Flegre, then Vesuvius. For those of you who might not know, the city of Naples with over three million people is basically enclosed with Vesuvius on one side and the way more dangerous Campi Flegre on the other side. Although the better known is Vesuvius, everyone remembers the the destruction of Pompeii and these these statues, these humans that died. And so you see, it's basically been constantly going on. But what we see now uh, is basically Campi Flegre now uninterrupted. And on this list, we only see the ones that are magnitude one or higher. So we've already, I think, around 30 earthquakes by now since the 26th. And it started out with a 1.9, then a 1.0, a 1.6, then on the 27th, a 1.1, another 1.1, just shortly after a 1.0, 1.1, 1.0, and just starting on the 28th, as we speak right now, another 1.3. And they're at a shallow depth depth between like two and three kilometers but in previous swarms they had a depth of zero basically very very shallow one kilometer so they're all basically in the solfatara area of the last one here the 1.3 i'll show you where the exact epicenter is so you see it's basically in Pozzuoli, um a little bit east of Pozzuoli, between Pozzuoli and Bagnoli, a little bit in the water. But basically, if you look at the whole earthquake maps, it is within this Campi Flegre caldera area that spans around 100 kilometers on land and in the sea. If you look at aerial pictures, it looks like someone has thrown a lot of bombs in that area because you see all these craters that form the supervolcano Campi Flegre. So the experts are warning, they're giving out a warning that although there are currently no signs of an imminent eruption, however, the possible continued accumulation of magma that is definitely happening and the increase in pressure underground that is also definitely happening represent a risk in their opinion that has to be monitored as closely as possible. And they're also saying it has to be managed with the greatest care. So this, if you read between the lines, it tells you how serious they're taking this. And I want to give you a quote of one person that works at the INGV, the Italian Institute um, of Geophysics and Volcanology. They're observing Vesuvius and Campi Flegre with the Vesuvius Observatory, the INGV, that is what it's called. That researcher says it is essential to constantly monitor the behavior of this volcano, especially considering that it is located in one of the most densely populated areas in Europe. That's the biggest problem. That's the biggest imminent problem, should there be an eruption. That's why 
in recent decades, what they have done, the network for measuring ground deformations has reached a very high level of technical skill and development. Um, and definitely there's a high number of stations throughout the volcanic area. And the reliability of data processing has been improved and uh, it's processed daily. They acquire new data about the volcano daily. Then what they have done, the satellite data that they're gathering has allowed for a reconstruction with large aerial coverage of the whole volcanic system. So they say, thanks to this high level quality of data that they can get from this volcano, it has been possible for them to create advanced models about this volcano to not only identify the modifications, to identify the cause of these monitored deformation. And it is magma. Magma, that's the problem. The director of the INGV and the Vesuvius Observatory, um, Mauro Antonio Di Vito, we know in my other video I told you he just recently said we have to be careful. This volcano is not dormant anymore and it's still active because it had like two weeks ago a few days of being like a little bit of quiet and he was proven right, right? It's starting again now. So he says about the recent studies and results that they provide important elements to better understand um, and constrain the current state of the Campiflegre magmatic system, basically the volcano. He says it also underlines the importance of international collaboration to get opinions of other scientists, to really, really get to the core of this volcanic system because they don't know much about what's really going on underneath. Although it's so closely monitored by the INGV, the director says, he says, it is so important to integrate different disciplines, scientists, and to use the expertise of different institutions to address complex problems such as that that exists here in Campi Flegre. And he says, only through a multidisciplinary approach, we can hope, listen, hope, to fully understand the dynamics of volcanoes because they don't right now. It has a big, big element of surprise and they have only a little, little time to warn people of an eruption, sometimes no time. What we're seeing right now is that this Brady seism that they have watched for the last 16 years is, they say, slightly intensifying right now. But if we look at the earthquakes, the 4.4 in May, that was the biggest one in 40 years, and there was another one 4.2 last year. So that has definitely intensified quite a bit, in my opinion. And because of the fact that it is intensifying, the scientists are saying, at the moment, there is no reason to believe that this magnetic activity, that the volcanic activity is not still continuing like it did before or getting even stronger. So yeah, guys, we have to wait and see. Um, it's definitely concerning that the rumbling is really coming on regular intervals. So at least they're doing something on the other side. People are getting more and more aware of the problem. They haven't really been so much. Everyone just thought it's Vesuvius. So the awareness, of course, when the 4.4 happened in May, people were running out on the streets. They were scared. They were like shattered. It came with a big roar, with a booming sound, and it has damaged homes. So people are aware of the situation right now. Are they fully aware of the risk? Do they close their eyes to the risk? Yes, I think some still do. But what can you do? You can either panic every day and be scared or move away. But if you choose to stay, I think you have to accept or deal with it in some way, right? Um, it's, it's hard 
to tell what they should really do. If you have some ideas, guys, leave me a comment and maybe become a member of this channel, guys. And if you already are a member of this channel, um, check the channel in a few hours. I want to upload a video. I'll explain to you. You might have noticed that I have released a few less videos recently and I want to explain to you the reason why. So check out the membership playlist. There you see all that. If you're a member, you have access to that. And for all the others, thank you for watching. Leave this video a like. Please subscribe if you're new here. And well, everything, if you want to support the channel or subscribe, the links are in the description of this video. So thanks, guys. Stay safe. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.